this is the summary for the day of 714 for the 7th of February. Uh, and I'm going to do some conclusion. So, um, so the important, the most important note is, I think it's Eddie but I want to talk about the aircraft first. I mentioned just now, uh, the Ukrainian Air Force seems to be largely invisible lately. I, I didn't really see much of this Ukrainian uh, Air Force uh, information. So this shootdown is uh, a rare instance that we're seeing Ukrainian Air Force information. We shall continue to monitor and see how this uh, how this develop. Um, and uh, of course, we go to the front line. There, there's three, three, I think, three major uh, places. One is this, as I mentioned, the Kupians front, the Russians push over at this front line is very threatening and they are massing a force over at uh, uh, this this is a where is this place called the Baifka region so with this pincer movement and uh, this this area here yeah this th we, sh we shall see how this goes because uh, if the Russians really pursue this I think the Ukrainians would, would not be able to hold the line because they already have lost one line already over over in this Kromalne region and uh, this line is particularly weak with the forces pushing on the two uh, more established defending uh, more established defense line uh, the Ukrainian forces is definitely wanting to you know, make sure that there's no more breakthroughs and the Russians can actually take advantage of the weakened uh, manpower to push through through the center but uh, we, we're not sure of course the, we will see how this progress the fighting at Sinkivka uh, is really pointless uh, it will always is keep on going but it never ends we shall see how this progress and uh, the other front line changes that i think is important uh so this one we really mentioned yesterday so i think nothing we don't need to rehash the same thing uh the other one is actually at the adf front the situation over the northern part is very concerning for the ukrainians it, the this break this change in front lines is very bad because this is remis reminiscence uh, of the situation in the beginning of the Ukraine war where the Russians are taking ground on a daily basis and I have to track the front line change closely to try to understand what is hell is happening and this is particularly bad with the 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 Russians to the very last road basically you know they can strangle the entire of Adyevka that distance is merely 500 to 800 meters effective 500 meters is enough just a half a kilometer progress uh, in this direction, half a kilometer progress in this direction, particularly you can capture this, this building over here. They would have direct uh, sight of the road and they will be able to uh, continue to put pressure and cut off this road. And uh, once this road is cut off, uh, we have operational encirclement. So this is uh, looking really bad, uh, looking really bad for the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians, the Ukrainians have to set, throw whatever they can at this gap. They have to throw whatever they can ha at this gap, and uh, and they really must consider this the reality of the situation. If they are unable to do effective counter attack, then a general uh, evacuation or redrawal order should be given. If not, then they may lose a lot more manpower that might be if combat effective for the months to come because the battle of ADFK is not going to be the end of the war after ADFK there is still Lashtokine you see there's still Lashtokine to fight for Olivka, Semenivka, Badaichi, Stepove is still being fought over Estonenke, Desjavane this redrawal uh, would still benefit the Ukrainians to continue to hold a line to continue to defend uh, the ground or uh, to, to defend their homeland and uh, to keep the fighting going and hopefully that uh, reinforcement or resupply will come so if they sacrifice all the troops that is currently you know defending fiercely and briefly at Eriefka yeah then it's going to be a repeat of Bakhmut uh, and uh, Bakhmut was is the reason why the Ukrainian counteroffensive is a bit weaker than it's supposed to be and uh, so much manpower was, was lost at Bakhmut and uh, to no avail so this is something very important to note and of course the important one is Novo Mihailivka so the Russians are now penetrating towards the center through the east of Novo, Novo Mihailivka the Ukrainians at least based on, based on the footages that I've seen seems to be unable to hold the line they don't have enough forces it seems and uh, the Ukrainian forces may be 
better served. If they are unable to hold the line, it would be better served to quickly build a, another line of defense around Konstantinivka or at Peraskovivka. Uh, Peraskovivka to, to, to prepare for the worst and uh, for the Russians to easily take over this place and uh, build, fight a, a new line rather than you know, try to fight in a totally flattened uh, settlement. But of course, Ukrainians being Ukrainians, they, they don't like to lose any any grounds. So we shall continue to monitor to see how this goes. So anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for the conclusions. I think uh, the rest I already covered in the sub wrap. So anyway, thank you for watching. Do let me know what you think in the comments. Press the like button. It's important to press the like button and comment. Uh, the reason is, uh, is this. If you interact with the video then you will get to see dpa's video getting suggested more often especially if you press the like button so if you find that you have problems uh seeing dpa's video getting recommended it's most likely because you're not pressing the like button you're not commenting uh particularly pressing the like button this will allow the algorithm to know that you actually like dpa's video and you want to see more of it and uh thank you for watching do press the like button and i'll see you guys in the next update